Hello and welcome to the Timberland Investor. You know, one of the most common problems people have in the woods is species identification. So I thought today we'd take a look at some common northeastern conifer species, and I'll show you how you can identify them by the needles. To start, let's look at white pine. Alright, now first off we have white pine. Now white pine is going to have characteristically long and thin needles. Now, interestingly, uh, in each bunch of needles, in most cases, they're going to have five different needles. And you can always remember that because white has five letters and there are five needles in each bundle. Uh, additionally, they tend to go all around the twig and on larger species, uh, excuse me, larger individuals, this is kind of from a smaller tree, on larger individuals, they're going to be kind of oriented as if they're little brooms. Um, you know, they kind of have that sweeping look to them. And of course, white pine is one of the largest trees, the largest tree in the northeastern United States, so it's readily identifiable by that too. Uh, one more thing about white pine is if you take the needles and you kind of crush them in your, in your fingers and smell, uh, it's going to have a little bit of an evergreen smell, but it's not going to be too pronounced, unlike some of the other species we'll cover. Okay, next on the list we have red pine. And like white pine, we're going to have long needles. They're definitely thicker than white pine. And unlike white pine, which has bundles of five needles, red pine is going to typically have bundles of only two. And once more, you can see that they go all around the twig, but it's going to be a lot more uh, distributed. It's not going to have that same broom sweepy look as white pine. Uh, additionally, the scientific name of red pine is Pinus resinosa. And you can probably guess how it got that name. When you break off a twig of red pine, you're going you're gonna to find some sticky resin on the end pretty much 100% of the time. Um, now this is a less common species, it's usually planted, but you do find it in sandier, sandier areas and on the bases of mountains and whatnot. Alright, next up we have northern white cedar, and this one's a pretty easy one, um, if only because it is not, they're not really needles per se, they're more like scales. I'm going to try to zoom in and show you if it's going to yep, focus. And uh, the needles just kind of, they kind of plate together. And on the twig, if you smell or crush the needles in your hand, cedar has a very sweet smell. It's not uh, the same sort of pungency as other evergreens. So it's a pretty easy identifier. Now you do have um, Atlantic white cedar in the northeast as well, but northern white cedar is uh, more numerous and it's all I have access to today. But they're both going to have that, that uh, you know, style of, of needle, so to speak. Alright, next up we have eastern hemlock. Now, hemlock we have two-sided, kind of messy arrangement on the twig. Uh, the needles are flat, they're kind of white on the bottom. They actually resemble balsam fir a lot, but they're shorter, uh, they're stouter for sure. Um, so it is, and we'll cover balsam fir next, but it is hard to, um, you know, mistake them once you get used to those lengths. Uh, additionally, hemlock is going to have a little bit of an evergreen smell to it, but it's not going to be too pronounced. It's not known for its, its ascent qualities. Um, so that's all there is to hemlock, and we'll move on to balsam fir. Next up we have balsam fir. So like the previous one, hemlock, uh, these needles grow on each side of the twig, so it's two-sided. Uh, they're a little white on the bottom, but they're a lot longer than hemlock, so it's easy to differentiate. Uh, moreover, the smell of balsam fir, this is your quintessential Christmas tree. So the smell is going to be very evergreen, it's going to have a very nice, pleasant odor. Um, yeah, it's very easy to identify from those attributes. So that's balsam fir. And finally we have spruce. This actually comes from a black spruce. There's also a red spruce, white spruce, and planted we have Norway spruce. But if you're watching this video, uh, it's, it's a lot harder to differentiate the spruce by the needles, um, the species of spruce by the needles. So just stick with spruce for now and um, you know come back to the individual species when you have a little bit more skill in the area. So we'll just stick to the genus. Um, now spruce needles are going to be the most needle of the conifer needles. And what I mean by that is they're short, they're stout, and they're sharp. When you push down on them there's enough 
enough kind of thickness there that it, it kind of hurts. You can feel them prick you a little bit. Um, no other conifer is going to do that quite the same way. Uh, now, if you look closely though, the needles are also more cylindrical. So they kind of have the shape of pine needles, but they're a lot shorter. They don't have the flat shape like hemlock or balsam fir. Um, and yet, yeah, going back to the sharpness bit a little bit, when I was working in the woods and I'd be in a stand of um, young spruce, and like if it was raining, my hands are a little damp, I'd actually get visible holes all over my hands from touching these branches all day. So it is, it is a notable attribute. Um, now the smell is going to be fairly pungent, especially on white spruce, but on all spruces. Um, so you, you can identify it from that as well. Hmm, I love the smell of fir. Well, that's all I have for now. Hopefully that helps you identify conifers a little easier. Um, go out there and practice, you know. It's going to take a little bit of time before you get used to the attributes of each species. But once you do, uh, you'll start recognizing them very quickly and you'll become an expert in it in no time. So if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And of course, subscribe for more content. Until next time, see you later.